All right. Thanks. Thanks very much, Ace. I, I really appreciate uh, getting the opportunity to talk more about our research. Uh, I'm Nick Kritschka. I'm the research coordinator uh, for the project with the American Historical Association. My colleagues, Whit Berenger and Scott McFarland, are listed here on the opening slide, and we are the team uh, working on this. Um, so to introduce it, uh, what I'm going to show us is a question uh, that you might have heard at the turn of the 2020s uh, when pundits were posing this rhetorically, uh, which is what on earth are school children being taught about our nation's history? Um, most people proceeded to answer this question in service of their partisan tastes and without any evidence. So uh, two years ago, research team at the American Historical Association decided to take the question literally. And after two years of uh, appraising state standards, analyzing legislation, uh, inter interviewing uh, hundreds of educators, surveying thousands of middle and high school U.S. history teachers, and reviewing instructional materials uh, from small towns, uh, suburbs, and cities, uh, we now have some answers. Uh, and our story uh, of how teachers are told what to teach, so these are our research questions here, um, what they choose to use when they teach, and how U.S. history topics are actually covered, um, the answers to these questions don't really fit into the um, the boxes provided by this kind of ongoing red versus blue culture war that we get uh, in the news feed. Uh, and it's also hard to summarize in five minutes, but I am gonna I'm gonna boil it down uh, at this point to five major uh, takeaways or four rather, sorry, major takeaways. Um, so number one is a story of apathy, not activism. Uh, and the apathy is what many teachers actually spend their time trying to overcome. Uh, with the exception of some definite hotspots, most teachers don't regularly face politicized pressure at their job. Um, only 2% of surveyed teachers say that they regularly face criticism to the, uh, related to the way that they teach topics in U.S. history. 44% uh, have never encountered an objection to anything they've taught. Uh, and so far from fending off throngs of critics, many social studies teachers are in a desperate struggle to get parents and students and even their administrators to care about history at all. Um, now, that's cold comfort to those who are unfortunate enough to face ideological pressure, which we have encountered um, in both red and blue flavors. Um, in those instances, teachers really try to hold fast to their identity as a neutral party. Uh, and I think this is this is a good thing. This is a praiseworthy um, professional commitment that teachers have. Um, preparing students for critical thinking and informed citizenship, um, which were the top educational goals among our surveyed teachers, this seems to require them to really maintain a political poker face in the classroom. Um, to move on to number two, uh, second big takeaway here, and no surprise to anybody working or studying K-12 education, uh, Decision-making about curriculum happens at multiple levels, uh, the state, the district, the schoolhouse, and the classroom. Um, so in spite of various efforts by state agencies, district administrators, and school principals to standardize and align instruction, teachers actually retain substantial discretion over what they'll use in their daily work. Uh, the most commonly referenced resource um, that uh, among surveyed teachers were, quote, materials that I designed myself. Um, at the course team level, however, um, which is to say teachers who teach the same uh, subject uh, in, a, in a middle or high school, a collaboration with colleagues is indeed ascendant. Uh, veteran teachers report a very clear trend away from autonomy and idiosyncrasy and toward alignment and common assessment over the course of their careers. Uh, and in states with a state mandated common exam in US history, um, and it should be said this is in the minority of states uh, in the United States, uh, that aligning force can be even stronger. Uh, takeaway number three is what we'll call the disappearing textbook. Um, as teachers have been nudged toward alignment, um, they've also been pushed away or have pushed themselves away from traditional textbooks, which are now unlikely to stand at the center of history instruction. Um, this reflects a relentless push for uh, so-called one-to-one uh, ratios of computing devices to, uh, to students uh, and a frustration that many teachers have expressed to us uh, with students who they see as unprepared or unwilling to read uh, at length. Um, over 30% of teachers surveyed said that they never use a textbook in their class, and those that do are far more likely to describe them as a, as a reference um, rather than something that they expect students to read regularly in class or for homework. Uh, instead, teachers make prolific use of uh, a decentralized universe of no cost or low cost online resources. Um, and as measured by our survey, you can see 
uh, a short list here of these top rated US history freebies um, that are on the web. And this is to be distinguished with things that a, a district might license or pay for um, for their teachers. Um, now, number four, uh, we'll say that we'll, we'll, we'll put this this way. Uh, things are mostly fine, but support is still needed. Uh, so in general, um, we find that K-12 coverage of American history is not riddled with distortions or omissions. Uh, local curricula and state standards sit within a structure of coursework where good history can certainly thrive. Um, you can see here the uh, common patterns of course sequencing that structure students' exposure to U.S. history across all 50 states. Um, and and this, this pattern has really stayed quite consistent for over a century. Uh, and there are some, there are some some potential problems with the way that this is arranged, which, which we could talk about. Um, but uh, as for instructional materials, uh, teachers have access to more sophisticated resources that, uh, to help students inquire, think, read, and argue like historians than ever before. Um, when materials do sh fall short, uh, it is because instruction has been streamlined uh, down to bare facts or banal platitudes or flat inevitabilities, or uh, this is again, kind of a very post common core a phenomenon, a mushy set of literacy skills rather than actual meaningful knowledge. Um, but it is not because teachers are engaged in ideological indoctrination, as some might accuse them. Um, so teachers, whether they're under pressure to rush through a topic or admitting that they, they lack strong knowledge um, in a particular era of U.S. history, uh, they cite the need for ongoing history-rich curriculum, uh, sorry, professional development on both ends of the US history timeline. And this is particularly urgent with um, district organized professional development tending to focus on technology or pedagogy rather than subject area enrichment that the teachers say that they want. Um, our research can't really tell us how teachers teach or what students are learning. Um, to use a well-worn culinary metaphor that we like, uh, our study of standards and curriculum is an appraisal of required menus and recipes. Uh, it is not a review of the meal. Um, so that's some other research that some folks can do, hopefully. Um, the current moment, as we understand it, uh, is actually really great for clarifying what's exciting and unique about history and what it can contribute to civic dispositions. Uh, ultimately, what history teachers teach their students about, which is to say cause and consequence, structure and agency, context and, context and complexity, contingency and continuity, uh, these are all really, these are ways of thinking about how society work and how change happens. Um, in other words, they're, they're really good civic tools, um, but they bear very little resemblance to what we hear partisan culture warriors argue about, which is something more along the lines of, you know, who are we as a nation and how we should feel about it. And the former uh, is what trains the mind for judgment, and the latter is what trains the mind for propaganda. And I think we're confident that all sides should agree on which one we want for children. Thanks.